All right. Um, I want to say ETM Hotep uh, for those who have uh, tuned in. <laughs> uh, this is your brother Wujau, and uh, this is another quick video, quick lesson. Um, if you look on my timeline, I've done quite a few uh, short, brief lessons. I've tried to keep them uh, brief. And one of the purpose or reasons for um, doing these quick lessons is to just share information and to kind of change the narrative uh, when people want to speak about ancient Kemet, uh, the language and the culture, uh, you know, to kind of change it up a bit because people will see a lot of different um, arguments back and forth over the same information. You know, a lot of stuff has been refuted and debunked, you know, um, in the past, you know, years ago. But we still see a lot of people arguing the same stuff over and over again. So uh, I started to do a quick uh, lessons and quick series of uh, lessons to add, you know, add to the to the narrative, add to the conversations to, to share information so that people can start changing up and actually uh, become interested in learning uh, the language. All right. Because uh, a lot of the misunderstanding, a lot of the misinformation will be eliminated if you know, if we all took time out and actually learn uh, the language, you know, um, I always say language is the DNA of culture. So anybody who's interested in the ancient Egyptian culture or any culture for that matter, you have to do it by way of its language. All right. Because language is the oldest witness to history. All right. The way that people think, the way that they um, communicate, everything that goes on in the minds of a people is uh, documented or crystallized in their language the way they communicate so if you learn the language you will be that much uh, better off in learning the culture or learning more about the people so it um, stands the reason that it goes for any culture that you're studying well anyway today um, for this quick lesson this is called Egyptian hieroglyphs a quick lesson in simplified monoliterals and um, I'll be doing it with my daughter uh, Farasha, as you can see her name. Uh, here, you want to introduce yourself? Come, come to the mic and just say, just say Hotep. Hotep. <laughs> People can't hear you. <laughs> okay, say, say Hotep. Hotep. All right. And what's your name? My name is Farasha. All right, and you are going to be my demonstrator for uh, the point out the simplified monoliterals right so what does monoliteral stand for what is that word like one one like consonant yep oh yeah one one letter like consonant yeah. all right so mono means what means what one like there you go so monoliterals are single single consonantal um glyphs that represent single consonants all right so she's going to help me out uh, today. Um, all right, because uh, she, you know, obviously, if if I'm teaching the language, it would be <laughs> it would be uh, kind of a default that my own children uh, learn and understand. All right. And most some of you all probably have seen my oldest daughter, um, Ayana. She's the one that um, maybe you all may be familiar with who did the counting. Um Metanetra or Sesh Metanetra numbers, counting the numbers from one through ten and um, dealing with plural, dual, and things like that. So she has a couple of videos and uh, definitely check out our YouTube channel. All right, Sesh Metanetra, excuse me, uh, Seshu Maani Metanetra uh, YouTube channel. All right. So, um, but right before I begin, I want to remind everyone to definitely check out our website. SeshMedunetcher.com. That's the home of the Seshu Maani Medunetcher, which is the logo that you see. All right. Definitely check it out and uh, register. Registration is fr free. There's a premium membership um, as well. And you can uh, register and you'll have access to our per, what we call Per Majat, which is our digital library. The word Majat is the word for scroll. And we pair means an uh, a location or an enclosure. So pair will be the the place of books, the house of books. And today we will call that a library. All right. 
So uh, check out, definitely check out the website. And then also, if you're interested in learning Sesh Metal Nature, which is what I encourage and what I've been teaching for seven years, um, go to SebaUniversity.com and you can register and you can enroll in the class. All right. So those are the two websites to bookmark and spread the word. And lastly, um, uh, these are our publications. Uh, on the left, you have the beginner's textbook, which is a beginner's introduction to Sesh Metal Nature. That's what we use as a textbook. The next book is our rebuttal book that we published um, in response to, you know, the claims that the hieroglyphs have not been deciphered. And then on the far, well, the next one is an upcoming publication um, that will be published hopefully by the end of this month, April. It's uh, Ronnie Kemet. The language of Kemet. Uh, it's our grammar book. This will be a textbook that we'll use for upcoming classes. And then, lastly, uh, Simplify Sesh Nature, a lesson in Egyptian hieroglyphic penmanship, book one, written by Emi Kadaku Kinshaya Kenyi. And it's this book right here, which is what we're going to show today, which, you know, myself with the help of, of my daughter Farasha. All right, so we're going to show um, just a tip on how to uh, learn all right all of these books, well except except for the grammar book the three books are available on amazon.com all right so show your support um, if you're interested in learning pick up those books um, it's just a wealth of information in, in all of them all right so now to our lesson so for us are you ready all right so we're gonna show now Okay, so what we're going to do is um, show an easy way to learn the simplified form of the Sesh Nature. Okay, now some Egyptologists will call this cursive hieroglyphs. And we reject that term, cursive hieroglyphs, for this particular writing style. And the reason why we prefer to say simplified, because the relationship between it is... Um, between is similar to how in English, if we were to write in English and you were to uh, write in print, what they call manuscript versus cursive. And so if I were to write the whole alphabet in print and then I write the whole alphabet in cursive and then you were to match which letter goes with which letter, this is what we're going to do uh, today. So we're going to show the formal glyphs the the precise detailed glyphs and then we're going to show the simplified version and match them up okay so this is what we're going to do so all right so let us begin give me one second here and okay so let me see i don't know if this microphone will be able to pick us up all right, so hopefully you all will continue to be able to hear me. All right, let's see. Let's see, let's see. Um, give me one second. I just want to make sure you everyone will be able to hear. All right. And hopefully there's no echoes or anything. All right. So say something to the microphone. Hi. All right. <laughs> okay, so hopefully everyone can hear. All right, so what we're looking at here, and hopefully I can be heard, is the Rauniu Peret Im Heru, which most people will know as the uh, Book of the Dead. Um. Oh, I guess you gave me in this microphone. All right, good. We can, we can be heard. <laughs> so, yeah, all right. So what you're looking at is the Rauniu Peret Im Heru, which most people will call, refer to as the Book of the Dead. All right, so this is, in particular, this is chapter 125, for those who may want to um, follow along or look it up. Uh, this is plate 31. And this is what most people may refer to as the negative confessions, but... I don't, you know, we don't really refer to it as negative confessions. It's a declaration of innocence. All right. And so we're going to use this to point out the difference between or to match the simplified uh, Sesh Metanetra, which is what you see here. 
and the formal. So, Farasha, you ready? Yeah. All right. Yeah. Okay. okay, so we're going to do this one first. If y'all can see this, this is the, what's, what's, what's that? You, the vulture. People. All right. And so identify the vulture on, and I'll try to follow with the camera, identify the vulture with uh, inside of the, the inscription. Okay, so hopefully everyone can see that. Get real close. Like, uh, if I get close. Close, close, it maybe get blurry. Uh, zoom in. There we go. All right, so very good. So that's a vulture. All right, so let's go to the next one. We're gonna go to the reed leaf. So this is the reed leaf, and so identify a reed leaf. I see the double. But I don't see. Oh wait. Oh, oh here it is. Right here. Okay, so let me zoom in if everybody can see your hand right there. All right, good. That's a reed leaf. Okay. Uh, next, we're gonna go with uh, we're gonna go with the double reed leaf. This one. There's one right here. You see a double reed leaf? Mm hmm. Like one right here. Oh, okay. Yeah. You find, Very find your hand. All right. That's a double reed leaf. All right. Now, mind you, this is good exercise to do to, to be able to recognize the whole point of doing this is to be able to go from the formal glyphs of them being perfectly carved and detailed to the simplified version that we see here. All right. So this is what we're doing just to let everyone know again. Mm. All right. So let's identify an arm. Is it this one? The one okay, the good. One, very good. Make sure I can zoom in on that a little bit. All right, good, good, good. Very long. All right. Looking shape. Let's go to the quail chick. The quail chick. Oh, here it is right here. The fat looking All right, <laughs> zoom in. All right, good. Got the quail chick. All right. I think he's like a pen or pen. Now we're going to go over to the leg, the foot. Right here. And, yep. Now that one's easy though, wasn't it? All right. So let's try to make them a little more difficult. Let's see what, Farash, let's see what you got. <laughs> All right. So now we're going to go to the stool, which is the P. It stands for the consonant P. Right here. Okay. Excellent. Okay. That's excellent. Uh, let's Small. see if I can zoom in on it. It's kind of blurry. Apologize for everyone. I'm trying to uh, focus in on it a bit. All right, next. Now that's the one that's in your name, so I know you you be able to get this mm -hmm. one real easy. Let's see where is it though? Do -do -do -do. Oh, here it is. It's right here. Okay, right there. And that is the horn viper, which represents, uh, we transliterate re literate that as what letter in English? S. Exactly. <laughs> All right. Letter in my name. First letter. Now let's identify P. owl. Uh, they're all right here. Where? All right here. Yes, good, 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 good. All right, Ikea. Excellent, excellent. Now we're going to go with the water ripple, which represents the, tra we transliterate this as the letter N, as in Nancy. So let's identify. The straight line right here. Yep. And what do you say about it? It's what? It's a straight line? Mm -hmm. Looks like a straight line. All right, good. That's easy enough. All right, this one should be easy. Yeah, they're like. A whole bunch of them are just right above. Okay. Oh, and what is it? What is what glyph is that? R. Okay. So we transliterate as an R, but what what is the actual glyph of? Oh, mouth. Yeah. There you go. <laughs> All right. Good. Excellent. All right. And this one here. Where is that one? This oh, wait, is, is an right enclosure. Here? Yes. Are <laughs> uh, you getting a little too fast for me now? <laughs> All right, so that's good. And this is, we transliterate this as a lowercase h. 
Now, mind you, uh, these are flashcards, and I'm going to um, get these produced again. These are flashcards that I had made, and we, we had them available at one point, but they, uh, they we ran out of stock. But I'm going to get them again. But on the back, we have um, the description, the Gardner code, and the two transliteration systems, okay, for those who, are, who may be interested. And I, I'll let everyone know when we make these available again, these flashcards, all right? Now we have the twisted flax. Oh, and that's a little oh, hard one. So wow. let's see if you could uh see like if you could point that out. Looks like the wick on that camera. All right, there you go. Twisted flax. Uh Wicks there we go. Right there. Good. Excellent. Excellent. All right. Now we have the placenta. Oh, mind you all, this one we transliterate as a capital H as you can see on the back. Magna Dakota is capital H. And this circle right here? Yes, excellent. Let's zoom dashing. in a little bit. Below that little man right there. Yep, excellent, excellent, excellent. All right, good. Mm -hmm. the thing is like All right, so let us yeah, move on to the next one. Now we're going to the udder. Right here. And teat? Where? Okay. They told you you kind of fast there. Wait a minute. You didn't know the next one is too. Okay. Z. Wow. Wow. Hold up, hold up, hold up. Next one. Next one is the door bolt. Translated right as a Z or an S. It's right here above. Oh, above. right above it? Yeah. All right. Good. So that was easy. Right next to each other. Mm-hmm. All right. Perfect. Good, 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 good. Excellent, excellent. Now the folded cloth, which is transliterated as an S. Should be right here. Okay, excellent. Uh, let's see if you get through all of them. All, okay, okay, let's see, let's see, let's see. I'm trying to. Now we have the pool of water, which is, uh, we transliterate as a capital S, but it stands for the sh sound, as in shoe. And what you got over there? Okay. I mean, there's another one with legs. Good. Excellent. All right. You're kind of like a pro at this, huh? I know oh, all okay. of the letters. You know all of them? I know all of okay. them. Okay, well, you better know all of them. <laughs> no, that's good. That's good. All right, so now we have the hill. It is right here. That was all right, see, that was fast. Stump right there. Yeah. Above there. Okay. Like it's right there. Good, 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 good. All right, excellent. Take care. Next is the basket with a handle, which we transliterate as a K. It's over here. It looks like someone's like biting their tongue or something yes. like that. Excellent. Ikea. Excellent, excellent, excellent. Next is the jar stand. Mm -hmm. We transliterate it as the letter G. Perfect. Is it? Let's see if you can find the jar stand. This is a little tricky because there's, there's rarely any judge stands. Is it like the one that's bottom that has like little toppy things like... Is it like this one right here? Okay, let me see if I can zoom in. You got it? Is that one here? Okay. Yeah. Excellent. Oh, yeah, yeah. Excellent, excellent, excellent. <laughs> that gave you a little bit of trouble though, huh? Yeah. It's well, it's not good. that many It's not that many uh, of them in, in this text, so, you know, so that, that will account for that. All right, so there. now we have the raised bread loaf, which is, we transliterate eggs. as tea. These are everywhere. Now, I'm sure you could find a whole bunch of those, right? Uh, oh, wait. That was that. Right there. Like, one right here. They're in okay. small. Yep. There's and there's a whole bunch of them. Yeah. So, that's good. Point out another one. Find another one. Uh, yeah, it's one over here. They're pretty right much here. everywhere. Yeah. Okay, good. Excellent. All right. So, uh, we got a couple more to go. This is the tethering rope. It stands for the sound. We uh, pronounce this as a ch, like in church, ch, mm -hmm. sound, like medu necher. Where All right, is it? let's identify this one. Yes, good. Mm. That was good. That was fast. All right, good, good, good. Take mm. care. All right, now we have two more left. This is the hand. Mm. Oh wait, the hand. Let's see if you can find. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> that was fast. All right, see, this is too easy for you. All right, we got, hold up, this looks blurry. Let's try to zoom in a little. 
bit right there. Oh, there it we go. is. Right there. Clear. All right. And then now we're going to go to the, the last one. letter. Right there. All right, cobra. This is the cobra, which is, has a J sound. And you point it right next to the, the D right there also. Yeah. Excellent. All right, good. Oh, and that's the, it. The alphabet. The whole little just my machine and everything. Excellent, excellent, excellent. That is good. All right, so that concludes those. Um, those, let me see. All right. My microphone back on. All right, there we go. All right, so hopefully you all um, have uh, enjoyed that. <laughs> Did you like doing that? Yeah. All right, good, good, good. Okay, so yeah, but um, we just wanted to show, demonstrate that uh, one of the one of the suggestions or one of the tips that um, I give is just what she did um, when we want to learn the uh, formal glyph session meta nature and we want to transition over to simplified session meta nature which is uh, what this book is all about uh, this book right here in the middle that you see uh, simplified session meta nature penmanship a lesson in Egyptian hieroglyphic writing book one monoliterals uh, by Amy Kataku Kinshai Akinyi um, this particular book teaches you how to actually uh, scribe them those those 24 monoliterals that we just went over this book tells you um, you know angle by angle stroke by stroke how to actually draw them and everything like that um, and but now in order to recognize them the exercise that uh, Farasha just did is highly recommended so you know um, like I said I will be making the flashcards available soon but in the meantime you can make your own or just or just get some kind of printout of the 24 monoliterals in their formal uh, in their formal rendition which is the detailed pictorial uh, look and then um, as we did we opened up the um, so-called book of the dead this is actually the papyrus of Annie and just look for them just try to find them and if you practice that enough you'll be able to easily recognize them and then what you'll find is you move from simplified Sesh Meta Nature to uh, Sesh Majat Nature, which is what the Egyptologists will call hi hieratic. And so you'll, what you're, in essence, what you're doing is you're moving from the formal pictor pictorial glyphs to the more simplified and more simplified versions. And then sooner or later, you'll, you'll find yourself being able to read what they're calling hieratic. Because remember, hieratic is nothing more than the uh, formal glyphs but the reason why they don't look as detailed one is because they're using a pen and ink and they're writing on papyri various different uh, papyri and what they did they the strokes are done in such a way where they put the pen down on the paper and they try not to lift the pen up off the paper as much uh, as least as possible so the strokes will blend into each other and in order to do that they had to simplify the details of the they had to sacrifice I should say the details and so it just takes some time to get used to so th these are exercises that that I teach and what what we do and I encourage go from the formal glyphs into the more simplified version and practice you know recognizing that you can use the uh, papyrus of Annie as we just did and then move from there to what they're calling hieratic and then you can have all three of them lined up and then match them up and when you do that, you will um, you can start with the monoliterals. Obviously, there there are much more glyphs than twenty four. the The monoliterals are are the ones that only represent one consonant. That's why they call monoliterals. But there are biliterals and triliterals and even quadriliterals. Uh, so there's a lot of glyphs. There's there in the Middle Kingdom there were seven hundred to a thousand glyphs, and then by the time of the end of Kemet as an empire uh, kingdom. There were a total of, of approximately 7,000 glyphs. So, so don't think that this is all the glyphs, but these are the most prolific glyphs because these are represent single consonants and they're everywhere. Okay? You'll find them in all inscriptions everywhere. So start with that and you'll be well on your way. Okay? 
So, you know, again, I just wanted to make this a quick um, lesson, you know, uh, with my daughter. Uh, she wanted to kind of show off a little bit yeah. with her uh, skills because, you know, I, I t I've been teaching for seven years and I also uh, make sure that they, they learn um, along with their school, you know, their schoolwork and things like that. They also learn uh, to become proficient at reading the um, glyphs. They want to be able to, to let the ancestors speak as well and they'll be able to read. All right. And so um, so you got anything to say? <laughs> Don't be shy. Just <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. Actually, I don't know. <laughs> all right. Well, that's all right. So. Okay. Well, you can say uh, Shemin Hotep. Shemin Hotep. All right. Good. <laughs> all right. That's fine. So, um, yeah. So let me see if anybody uh, has any questions or anything. Uh, so hold up. Don't go anywhere yet. They might have questions for you, you know? All right. So let's see. Does anybody have any questions for... Or, uh, oh, yeah, by the way, the um, Simplified Session Metal Nature, we will have a course um, that will um, complement this particular book that you see in the middle. Okay, so there is a course that is being developed and should be um, available very soon. All right, that uh, Sunnet Emicat will be uh, conducting. All right, so uh, look out for that. But let's see if any, anybody had any questions for you. Uh, Farasha, let's see. Okay, anyone confused? I'm using codes. You'll key into Vegas. Okay. Yeah. That's our brother class. Sean. Can't wait for her class. <laughs> oh, it says, "Are those the negative confessions?" That's a, a less. Yeah, we don't we don't refer to them as negative confessions. Uh, as I said, they are declarations. Uh, you know, more properly said, as declarations <laughs> of innocence. All right, because mm -hmm. um, you're not confessing negative things; <laughs> you're declaring your in innocence from those negative things. All right. So uh, let's see. Anyone else? I guess there's no questions for you. See, so you handle you handle business very well. Wait, wait, wait. wait, wait, wait go down, go down. I think it says something. What? Go down, go down. Like go all the way down. All the way down. Yeah, I think it says. What does her name mean. Oh, what does her name mean? Okay, there you go. You could you could tell him. Uh, Speaking to the mic. Uh, does it mean like butterfly? <laughs> yeah, What's but that? my name means butterfly. Okay, well say it, say it, say it like with confidence. You all shy. Yeah, Look, for, nobody, uh, nobody can see you. <laughs> <laughs> nobody can see you. You yeah. can hear your voice. Uh, uh, Farasha means butterfly. All right, good. Favorite, Excellent. My favorite huh? Okay, it's good. Farasha, all right. We won't get into your whole name, your whole long, long name, but yeah. All right. Okay, you want to say your whole name? Okay. All right. I don't know if they can hear you. See, you're acting all shy and everything. All right, we're gonna have to do this more often. We're gonna get get you out of your shy bag. See, this is. This is my uh, middle middle daughter. I got three daughters. This is the middle one, and she's like the shy one. All right, so I'm trying to break her out of it uh, by by actually doing this lesson with her, this quick lesson with her. So anyway, all right. So um, yeah, we want to keep this keep this brief. So I won't uh, make this any longer. But hopefully, you all enjoyed it and uh, share share the video and. Um, also, take take heed to the advice. That's you know this is what uh, you should do. Um, remember, uh, take the formal glyphs, which are detailed, pic picture pictorial in nature, and then compare them. The monoliterals compare them to the so-called Book of the Dead of Ani. That's the most popular one. Um, you can pretty much find it everywhere, and just try to identify them, and then just practice, 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 and then move from there, and. Uh, get a high, a high what they're calling a hieratic inscription and then start to identify them there and trust me before you know it you'll be able to read uh all three of what they're calling three different scripts and they're different writing styles and it's similar to to changing your font you know and we we did it we did a whole show on the writing styles of formal session metanature and what they're calling hieratic 
what we call uh, Sesh Majat Netcher. All right. So we have Sesh Medu Netcher, Simplified Sesh Medu Netcher, Sesh Majat Netcher, and Sesh Nishat. That's what people call Demotic or Demotic. All right. Those are the indigenous names for those scripts. So we don't have to say hieroglyph, hieroglyphic. We don't have to say hieratic. We don't have to say demotic. We don't have to say those things anymore. So make sure you spread the word. Demotic is indigenously called Seshni Shat. It means the inscriptions of letters. The hieratic, which were which were um, the style that the that the priest used, which is why um, Clement of Alexander called it that. Is called Sesh Majat Netcher, which which are the divine the the inscriptions of divine writings, okay. And then you have the formal Sesh Medu Netcher, all right. So remember that. All right. So let's see. Um, Brother Sean says, uh, "Saber, I was entering the codes as she was building on the monolithos, right? The Gardner codes, yeah. And those are included on the back of of those uh, flashcards." That I had there. All right. So anyway, that conclu concludes our lesson. We try to make it quick and informative as possible. So hopefully, you all um, will leave satisfied. And I will say Shimon Hotep. And you want to say Shimon Hotep? Shimon Hotep. Eat. <laughs> all right. So uh, yeah, appreciate everyone tu tuned in, and um, make sure you share. Uh, actually, I didn't even put this video as public. Oh. That's um. You would have to actually be a fr on my friends list. Let me do that now. I should have done that first. Okay, so the video, the video, uh, it defaults. I don't know why it does that, but it defaults um, to not being public like that. So, okay, the video is public. So share it, share it around, and and um, you know, take heed to the to the advice. But anyway, I, I will say uh, Shemim Hotep, and I'll see you all next time.